All right. I don't see anyone in the chat room right now, so I'm going to go to my Discord server and I'm going to just start um going to start uh let me see. Come on. There we go. Post a message in there, tell everyone over there I'm live streaming. So if anyone's online over there, they can come over here. All right, go to my live, I mean, my Discord server. I'm going to type in, I'm live streaming right now. All right, I'm going to minimize that. Then I'm going to take a look here. All right, Alex Chastity, welcome to the live stream. So, normally I want to start with an article or something that I, that catches my attention and then I'll talk about it and then I'll start chatting with everyone else. So right now we've got five people. All right. So, I'm good. All right. Well, I will start reading this article and then give my thoughts on it. All right. So, this comes from Total Guitar. And it relates to uh, one of my biggest influences, Glenn Tipton from Judas Priest. So, it says, actually, hang on, let me uh, lower this. Or, hang on, I'm trying to find where a good spot to place my webcam. There we go. All right. So, he says, oh, the title here is... This disease won't beat me, and I will continue writing and playing for as long as I can. Glenn Tipton explains how Richie Faulkner, in a no-surrender mindset, has helped him adapt his Judas Priest role. Tipton stepped back from official touring duties in 2018, but continues to write and record alongside Faulkner as a crucial member of Judas Priest. So you can see them right here. That's uh, Richie Faulkner, who joined the band in 2013 or 2014. Over here, this is, of course, Rob Halford, the metal god. And over here, on the right, this is Glenn Tipton, who is one of the original members of Judas Priest, but he stepped back. So now I'm going to start reading in the article. So it says here, back in 2018, Glenn Tipton announced he'd be stepping down from his formal touring duties with Judas Priest owing to his ongoing battle with Parkinson's disease. Tipton has remained a key part of the Priest lineup, albeit with a slightly altered role, and has continued sharing electric guitar duties with Richie Faulkner, whom Tipton has lined up alongside since K.K. Downing's departure in 2011. Okay, so it was 2011. I thought it was 2013. So it says here, speaking in the new issue of Total Guitar, Tipton discussed just how crucial Faulkner has been in allowing him to transition into a more accommodating role that still sees him record and perform. I played what I could, and am very proud of the whole album. Tipton explains of the band's newest record, Invincible Shield. Richie helped a lot. I think his strongest attribute is his ability to adapt to different styles. While me, whilst, you know, that's a British guy when us stupid Americans never use the word whilst in our vocabulary. <laughs> or at least people who are in their 20s in the internet. I never see anyone using the word whilst before says <clears throat> adapt ability to adapt to different styles whilst maintaining his own very strong character priests require a guitarist who can shift from out and out metal to more melodic tracks 
So, yeah, I still find it so fascinating how Glenn Tipton has Parkinson's, but wait, who the hell is calling me? Uh, Mo, I can't. All right. All right, guys, give me one second. All right. So, <clears throat> says here. All right. So as so anyway, it's still amazing how he has uh, how Glenn has Parkinson's and yet he's still able to um continue playing the guitar. I just find that fascinating cuz usually when people get a diagnosis like that they think well i guess i can't do this anymore but he's still finding a way to continue on and that is incredible so i'm going to continue reading here it says as well as piling praise on his fellow guitarist who previously suffered an on-stage aortic aneurysm during his set in oh you know what i heard about that yeah so it's funny and that's not funny, but Richie is the youngest one, and yet he had an aneurysm during a concert? Wow. Holy crap. <clears throat> Let's see, Tipton also touched on how he's been juggling his priest duties with his own medical battles thanks to a no-surrender mindset. Obviously, the drawback for me now is Parkinson's, and I've had to pass a lot of work onto his shoulders, Tipton goes on. I keep pushing myself because I believe in no surrender. This disease won't beat me, and I will continue writing and playing for as long as I can. As mentioned, Tipton is still a key figure in the Judas Priest lineup. Andy Sneap was recruited to help share the workload, but Tipton still writes records, and when circumstances allow, it performs live. It says, for example, in the past, Tipton has reunited on stage with his priest bandmates at Barcelona's Rock Fest in 2022, and for Judas Priest shows in Oakland and Las Vegas. In the same issue of Total Guitar, Richie Faulkner dove deeper into the process behind sharing his six-string responsibilities with Tipton, giving greater insight into just how well the two guitarists work together. When With Glenn's situation, he wasn't playing as much lead as before, but that's okay, we didn't want to impede the process. If Glenn was having a good day, he'd play the part. If he couldn't, I'd do it. We didn't want him to worry. He brought songs to the table like Sons of Thunder, which is a classic three-minute track. Glenn is the master of that stuff. He was as involved as he could be, and it was important for us to involve him. I see, I see. Yeah, um, Sons of Thunder, I didn't know that Glenn wrote that, with song but that is one of that's a great song from their new album invincible shield <clears throat> so it says here tipton previously discussed his ever evolving role in an interview with guitar world during which he asserted his riff writing remained in fine working order i went into it with the understanding that i had to adapt he reflected of his Changing Judas Priest role, I have to realize my limitations. Basically, you just have to deal with what life throws at you and make the best of it. I don't try to set the mark too high now because obviously my conditions mean my condition means I can't play guitar like I used to, but I can still build songs and I can still get a mean riff out. And that's the spirit right there. So yeah, this was written by Matt Owen from Guitar World. So, yeah, I love Judas Priest. They have been, like, one of my biggest influences since I first started listening to them back in 2010 when I was 
I think 15 or 16. So yeah, they are a huge influence on me and just seeing how Glenn continues to persevere even though he has Parkinson, so he can't fully tour, he can't fully play live, but he's still in the studio, he's still writing songs, he's still doing what he can. And I love that because normally when you see, I think Def Leppard is another good example of this, like when their drummer Rick Allen, when he lost his arm in a car crash in 1984, most people would think, well, I guess that's it, it's over. But similar to Glenn, Rick didn't let this thing stop him from playing the drums he continued to do it and he's persevering and he's been playing you know ever since and same thing with glenn he knows he can't do it fully like he used to but he's still figuring out ways to be able to do his passion learn to play guitar you know still continuing to be one of the absolute pioneers in heavy metal so that absolutely inspires me and it encourages me to just, you know, like, I have no excuse if I'm having a bad day, so what? It's like, it's just like what I was talking about in one of my older, in a video I did about maybe, I don't know if it was a month ago already or a few weeks ago, but I made a video called Keep Showing Up and like what Glenn is doing here, perfect example of that right there. So anyways, what, what, what do you guys think of this article? <clears throat> All right, now I'm just going to, there we go. I have zero fucking tolerance right now for 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 sarcastic assholes right now. So anyway, So a row two, I'm doing pretty good. Theo says, doing my push-ups and listening to you, it is, I think he means it's midnight in France right now. Kevin, welcome. Welcome, Jessica. Astroflex, welcome. All right. <clears throat> Skunk Ape is asking, uh, hey, Jaren, are you a fan of Paul Gilbert? Absolutely. Paul Gilbert is one of my biggest guitar influences. I first started, uh, I became, I discovered him in 2008, was blown away by how fast he is. Like, seriously, if, you've, if you guys have never seen Paul Gilbert, like during one of his uh, like guitar solos during a Mr. Big concert in the 80s, it is been it is just mind blowing because like we, there's guitar players that are fast and then there's Paul Gilbert but the thing is I love how he doesn't make speed be the his only contributing factor to who he is as a guitar player it's like sure he says I can play fast but that's not the only thing so it's like he's still able to have great great rhythm, great great riff writing. I I love his solo albums. I love Mr. Big, his band, and by the way Billy Sheehan, one of the best bass players as well. Like Mr. Big overall is great, but um they're going to be in Houston. I don't know when, but you know, if I had the money to go, I would go see them because I missed out on them three times and then Pat Torpy, their drummer passed away so now nick de virgilio who i don't know what bands nick was in before but i just recognize him as he was the guy that did that demoed all the drum kits for sweetwater on their youtube channel so he's cool um so i'm just uh glad that mr big is there because they're on their farewell tour and i i know that when people talk about farewell tours they 
think of, oh, well, no, no, that's never true. But I think with Kiss, Kiss loves money too much to truly be gone. But with Mr. Big, because, you know, Pat Torpy is no longer with us, may he rest in peace. I'm just glad that they're still able to, um, that they're able to get back together for one last tour. And so, yeah. I'm it's funny because Mr. Big is one of those bands where they're so much bigger, even though they're American, they're so much bigger everywhere else than they are in America. Like when they tour in Europe and they play in Japan, especially Japan, where they're huge, like they tour, they like they play at the at Budokan, the famous stadium. They've been there several times. And when you go to Europe, you know, they play in arenas. But all of a sudden, when Mr. Big performs in the country that they're from in America, the biggest place they can play at are small theaters, but they also performed here at, at the House of Blues, which I wanted to go to that back in 2011, but I I couldn't go at that time. So yes, love Paul Gilbert. He is one of my absolute favorites. Scott is asking, is renting an Uber car expensive? Yes, it it is expensive. <clears throat> I don't know if it changes depending on where you're where you are, but for me, it's three hundred and twenty dollars every week, and uh it's just uh Man, if I could, man, I'm not going to rant about Avis right now. I'm not going to do that because, because the, the world doesn't need more negativity and more anger. But it is, at the very least, to say a big hassle and a big challenge having to deal with them. HB says, hey dude, great to see and hear from you. Welcome to the stream, HB. Christian Brazil says, hey, finally caught one. What's happening, man? I'm doing pretty good right now. I did a nice long uh, one-hour meditation, and I, uh, apart from that one comment from that one guy being a dick, and I asked, how's the article going? And then he, uh, I said, what do you think of the article? And then he said, we think it sucks and it's like instead of automatically getting upset and angry at someone acting like a sarcastic snobby piece of shit fourth grader all i did was just hit hide user from this channel wash my hands of it it's done pay no more attention to it Theo says, nice shirt, bro. Thanks. Yeah, this is my, uh, yeah, I got this shirt when I saw Guns N' Roses in 2017 at the Toyota Center. Um, it, it was this. It says, yep, it just says established uh, 1985 Los Angeles. <clears throat> so let me see here. HB says, hello, chat. JH says, do you have a Discord server, Jaren? No. I mean, yeah, fuck, why? Sorry. Hang on, let me post the link so that that channel can get, or my Discord can actually get more people in there. So let me grab the link for you guys so that people who want to be in there can join in. So, yep, yeah, there's the link. Uh, let's see here. Brock says, hi. Welcome back, Brock. I've seen you here before. Malcolm says, hey, I'm glad you started live streaming today. I don't mean to be all sad, but I've kind of been having a shitty day. Well, the only thing I could tell you is instead of focusing on the things that make you feel like shit, start putting your attention on things that make you happy 
and just keep doing that. Keep thinking about the good things, the things you like. What do you enjoy doing? Keep thinking about that over and over and over again. And it will shift your energy. It might not happen immediately, but if but the best, most important thing I can tell you, Malcolm, is you keep persevering. Keep uh, you, you because if you just wallow in that shitty feeling, it's going to absorb you. I wait. I spent a long time being absorbed in the shitty feeling. I know what that's like, and you can get out of it. I know you can, because shit, if I can do it, I know anybody. If me, of all people, can get better from feeling like shit, I know you can. And I know anyone else that feels like shit can feel better. Davred2000 says, boss man. Well, you know, the your profile picture, it's not a profile picture, but it's orange and... You wrote boss. I just immediately think of the boss DS1 distortion pedal. Aro2 says work gave me a free bubbly sparkling water pack, which is nice. That's cool. Sparkling water is what uh, saved me from my soda addiction. Dandin, welcome back, Dandin. Haven't seen you here in a while. It says W man and W stream. Thanks. <laughs> Brock says, come on, man, we need more people on this live stream. Well, if I just continue to live stream more and more and more, it's only going to build from now because it feels like my baseline might be here. But the thing is, you just got to keep doing it because you just need a little bit of momentum. And once you have that momentum, so it's kind of like uh, almost like this, how if you see my hand here, you see like your momentum keeps falling. Like this is like your baseline for views. And so it keeps going down the less active you are, but the more you keep doing it, it just, it's like this. Something keeps hitting it to keep the baseline continuing to go up. So it goes like this, like, right? You don't do it for a few days, then bam, keeps going up. And pretty much you just, it's like every time you live stream, it's like it's doing that over and over again. The baseline pretty much, that, that could be on a t-shirt, increase the baseline. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Brock says, I really liked Van Halen's music. It's too bad Van Halen is dead. Well, I what I will say is Sammy Hagar right now is going on tour. It's it's him, Joe Cetriani, Michael Anthony, and Jason Bonham. So like three-fourths of Chicken Foot, except without Chad Smith, but you have Jason Bonham. That's going to be amazing. I really would like to be able to get tickets to that show when he comes here because I don't know when the next time Sammy's going to be here because I've seen David Lee Roth with Van Halen. I have not seen Sammy Hagar or Michael Anthony yet, and I still want to see Wolfgang. So, Brock, if you have never heard Mammoth WVH, I highly recommend it. Uh, that's Wolfgang, which is Eddie's son. He uh, is incredible. He's a lot like Lenny Kravitz or like um, or like Prince, where he plays all the instruments on his albums. Like, that's him. Like, when you hear the album in the studio, it's all just Wolf. It's all him. Guitars, bass, drums, singing, writes his own music, and he co-produces his music. But the thing that I think is so nice that Wolfgang does is, is that he's able to work with his dad's company, EVH, the EVH brand, and he got to design his own guitar because the one really cool thing about Wolfgang is he said, of course, he loves his dad, but he doesn't want to play the same type of guitars his dad plays. He wants to forge his own identity. So what he did was he designed his own semi hollow guitar. It's actually, you know what? Let me pull it up right here for you guys. Let me let me uh, minimize my webcam and I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. Actually, you know what? Let's bring in a guest. I don't know if he's still online on Discord, but uh um hey Danden, is all right, is it all right if I um oh, they, you guys are in a voice channel. I see. I didn't even realize that. Oh wait, you guys aren't. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me open up uh I'll just see if anyone answers it. 
uh, or let's just let me see. I don't know if he's online right now, but we'll see if he's here. We're going to call up Mo right now because he tried calling me earlier. I don't know if he's going to answer. Yeah, I, I'll just wait. Maybe he'll join, want to join later on. So anyway, I'm going to pull up these photos now of, uh, I'm going to pull up these photos. Uh, so first I want to give you a reference. So, uh, Wolfgang was very, Wolfgang Van Halen was very heavily inspired by, of course, his dad, Eddie Van Halen, but also Dave Grohl. And he loves those ES, those hall, those semi-hollow uh, ES three three five guitars. That, um, but so I'll just show you guys, you know, some. So I have a visual reference here. This is the what the Gibson ES three three five is like. So I'll just pull up some images over here. Uh, well, whoops. So it pretty much looks like this. You guys can see it. I'll just uh, try and pull up a good photo. I'm sure you you might be familiar with this. It looks like this here. So it's semi hollow because down the middle, or like right here, down the mid, down the middle of the body, it's solid. But then these two sides here are hollowed out. So if you play it unplugged, it's much louder than playing like a Strat or a Les Paul, which are solid bodies. Oh, I'm getting a call. Hey, you're live. On Wait, give me one second, Mo. I don't know if uh, try saying something. Can you, uh, Mo, try talking right now? Can you hear him? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, yeah. So can you guys hear Mo? He's alive on the call. Yeah, I'm in the car right now. I'm driving. Oh, you're in the car right now? Okay, just remember, yeah. you're live on YouTube, so don't say, don't no, start, <laughs> don't start talking like, uh, saying some crazy stuff. <laughs> all right, we can hear him. All right, all right. So, yeah, Mo, I was just, so. I can't look at the chat, y'all, but I'm driving. Yeah, he's driving right now, so safety he's, first. yeah. Yeah, safety first, eyes on the road, so he's just using the Bluetooth in his car right now. So, yeah, I was trying to tell the my viewers about Wolfgang Van Halen, Eddie's son. I was trying to explain uh, his new guitar to them because he based it off of a Gibson ES-335, which is semi-hollow. But, so pretty much this this is the type of guitar that Wolfgang used on his very fir on his first album. But then for the second album, he got to design his own guitar where it looks like this. So this is Wolfgang Van Halen, and this is his guitar here. So you can kind of see the resemblance to it but he just wanted to put his own spin on it. And so he also, like, and it comes in different colors. So here is a satin black one. Or actually, we can, there was an, a Guitar World article for it. Yeah, here's the different colors. So we've got a satin black, we have a sunburst purple and a satin green which actually looks like the same like matt army uh, green color as chris cornell's uh signature guitar so yeah that's what this look so yeah these are his guitars right here so yeah it looks really cool because the thing is i of course i love 
Eddie Van Halen, but the actual Wolfgang guitars, which I'll show the uh, to you guys, uh, the EVH Wolfgang. Man, I got some news to tell you, man. The rental company charged me $800 today. They ch oh, sounds a lot like Avis, where they just start randomly charging your fucking card. Yeah, I was fucking pissed, bro. And that's exactly they, they put me. They put they fucking put me in a fucking protection waiver. Well, now you understand. And the how guy didn't. And the guy didn't fucking tell me, so they fucking taking eight hundred dollars every week. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? I was yelling in the fucking line. Everybody was looking at me. Well, the important thing is to not yell in public. Because I've been through that a couple of times. No, but like, dude, I was pissed, bro. Like, you gotta really watch these fucking companies. You, man, but no, it's and I'm only in a rental company. I right? have rental car for an accident. Can you imagine? But yeah, I know. That's but crazy. It's but what you have to learn is when you can hear news like that and not let it affect you emotionally. That's when the growth happens, because. As I get it, like yeah. I would be extremely pissed off too. But I'm learning now to not like whenever That's, shit like that news, happens. It, it did come out of it. Some some good news came out of it though. They're giving me half my refund back. So That's I, good. The other half I had to pay it. That's good. So they they working with me somehow. So I, hey, that's better than nothing. So I can't. Complain. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing is. I noticed, like, whenever I want to feel extremely mad and angry and upset. No, but it's not like I was yelling mad. It's just I was pissed, bro, for what happened. You know what I mean? Right. Because they did it twice. Yeah. Uh, I, they that's, did it for two weeks. It's crazy. I mean, Avis continue. Like, my fucking bank account is negative right now because of Avis. That's why I had to open up another one because they continue to charge these goddamn toll road fees to me all the time without telling me. And I wouldn't even get like the official email receipt from these fucking toll road fees until several days it's afterward. Well, actually, to be honest with you, though, like the, the tolls, they actually fix it. The easy tag is I have an account with easy tag. They pull out the tolls now. But they were just yep. charging me for something else that I told them to take me off of. Yeah. It didn't do that. So Right, right. So yeah, this was so for so everyone watching here, this is the guitar that Eddie designed that he named after Continue his son. On Texas 99. Oh, okay. Hey, 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 uh, hey, hey, uh Mo shit. I can't have people hearing the directions. That's like that's a oh, safety geez. hazard. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, if you could just mute the Google Maps or whatever you're using. But anyway, like this is what Eddie, Eddie designed and it's cool. Like it, but this type of guitar is not for me because it has a Floyd Rose on it. And which is this thing right here, the Floyd Rose, the whammy bar and it's locking and it's cool. If you like to use the whammy bar all the time, but it's not for me. Um, and the guitar just feels really small. Whereas, the uh the uh, whereas the uh whereas this um SA126 and it's called SA126 cuz that's what um Eddie I'm sorry cuz he wanted to make it like what the nod to what Gibson did whereas they called their guitar the ES335 this is the SA126 and SA means semi-acoustic which is another way of saying semi-hollow and 126 they came up with that because that is for january 26 eddie's birthday so i love how wolfgang was able to come up with his own design and you know still have nods and have tributes to his dad which is great i have no idea how much this is going to cost probably a very expensive but um it's, but yeah, I mean, this looks way more comfortable. <clears throat> Devred says that call sounds so ancient because haven't had anyone call me on Discord in years. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, I tried to, that's why I called him, man. I tried to just make something different, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, how's okay. It, how's your, how's everybody's day going? Yeah, how's everyone's day going? Yeah, 
Yeah, he can't really read the chat, but I can pass along what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, he can. Yeah, have Jaren pass it to me because I'm driving right now. It's dangerous. Yeah. Can't be looking at the phone. Oh, wait, Mo, are you able to um to drive me to the show? Uh, like, are you able to hang out Saturday? I might have my car on Friday. If not, then I'm going to have my car back on Monday. So I, either way, I'll, I'll try to make it there. So. Yeah. Cause you're, you're renting. Yeah, cause they gave you help. So. Cause they gave you that Chrysler. Yeah. They, yeah. they gave it's you the Chrysler Pacifica 2023. Yeah. You know, I'm so old. I remember when the Chrysler Pacifica was an SUV. Like, that's what it used to be, like, I think back in 2004 or 2005. And I think Celine Dion was in the commercial for it. <laughs> hey, yeah, like, cause, because before you had, like, before Matthew McConaughey was doing those Lincoln commercials, Celine Dion was doing Chrysler commercials. If you're the same age as me and Mo in the chat, please tell me if you remember seeing those commercials. Oh, Chastity, by the way, Mo. Man. Chastity says, hope you're doing well today, Mo. <clears throat> yeah, I'm all right. I'm pretty. I do got some good news. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to tell. I don't want to tell him in the stream because it's kind of private, but I'm going to let Jerry know. But some good news happened, but I don't want to get too, you know, personal. But, right, yeah. right. So I'm happy about that. I see. So, okay, so there, so there is, they've, okay, that's actually a lot, uh, less than I thought it was going to cost. So for the, for the SA-126 guitar, um, it's going to be one seventeen ninety nine for like the solid colored ones. So like this green one and the black one, but the, um, the, the ones with the quilted maple top are going to be eighteen ninety nine. So, you know. That's still expensive to be called expensive, but I thought it was going to be more than two grand. Dang. So, yeah, I'm, so I, I'm guessing if these are the prices, then that means they're probably going to be made if, at the EVH at the Fender Mexico factory, which is probably that's because that's where they built the Tom DeLonge signature guitars, the reissue. So I, it wouldn't surprise me if it's coming out of that same factory because that Tom because remember Mo uh, Tom DeLong the guy from Blink One Eighty Two we played his signature guitar at Guitar Center you remember that Oh yeah that was a good guitar I actually liked that one. Yeah so 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 those I I have a strong feeling those same people are going to be building these new uh, Wolfgang uh, these new SA SA One Twenty Six guitars. Yeah, traffic in Houston, y'all, is ridiculous. Right now, it's taking me about an hour to get home. Ridiculous. Yeah. Austin Burlingham says, you're so underrated, you should have more viewers. Good to see you, bro. Thanks. Thanks for coming to the stream. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is right now, I'm not getting a ton of views, but... I know if I just continue, like what I made that one video about, if I just keep showing up, it's going to keep on, keep moving. We're just going to keep growing from there. Uh, Jonathan, welcome. Uh, Yuka, welcome. Uh, he says, AGG, welcome. He says, uh, what have I missed? Uh, Jonathan, we were talking earlier about Glenn Tipton continuing to, even though he can't really perform live, he's still like a tour, he's still like playing in the studio with Judas Priest and still writing songs. But we were also showing, uh, talking about this. This is the EVH SA-126. This is Wolfgang Van Halen's signature guitar. And it's actually much cheaper than I thought. Or uh, cheaper. Uh, it's still expensive, but it's under two grand. Whereas I thought this was going to be more than two grand. So, like, the solid colored ones with this army green and this uh, stealth black, those are going to be uh, $1,799, 1700 so 1800 and 1900 essentially. So, $1,899 for the, uh, for the quilted maple ones, like this purple and the that one. But, yeah, they look great because I prefer these over the Wolfgang guitars. 
because these just felt too small and they felt like and these feel like they just would keep slipping off of my leg because they just feel really small and compact um and they they still play great but it just takes a a while for me to get the one one of these but oh a row two says how expensive can guitars get <laughs> buddy you can get they could get as expensive as you want them to be I mean, I've seen guitars, like, if you go to especially, like, the Fender and Gibson Custom Shops, easily more than five or ten grand. Uh, because it's one guy, like, if you, especially if you get the ones that are, like, master built, all by one guy, by one craftsman, where he's just using hand tools and doing them all by himself, those will easily get over five grand. But, yeah, like, the, but pretty much, but the amazing thing is we are actually right now living in an incredible time to be a guitar player because there has never been such high quality for a lower price because in my opinion the greatest feeling looking sounding guitar on the market for a lower price are these ibanez uh, geo guitars it's uh what is it the ibanez geo gr121 i think that's what it's called uh it's not it's because i it's a specific one because it has a roasted maple neck for not a ton of money um and you can get the very flashy like chameleon color where it goes back and forth between purple and come on i'm going to immediately know it when i see it oh come on man oh yeah yeah right here yeah, this one's three hundred dollars, and but it doesn't. But I'm trying to find where the other color is. But yeah, like this. Man, three hundred dollars for me though ain't nothing. <laughs> whereas three hundred dollars for me means I won't be able to eat if I spend that much money. Yeah. But yeah, it's where. But the thing is that maybe uh you won't be able to see. But maybe in here, like it's like a black sparkle, so it's subtle. But there's all, but they have my favorite color I would want, which is this one. This is a, it's back ordered, like it's that popular. They call it the blue metal chameleon because it looks blue here, but in the light, it's turned in, into purple. Like the, I was so shocked when I played this at Guitar Center. Um, Jonathan, uh, this is my friend Mo. He's on the call. He's calling me on Discord. He was here before, like, if you look back at some previous live streams, like, if you just type in Mo Slim 3, um, you'll be able to see him. But, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's the link for that. I'm just letting you know where you are, though. My channel is dead. I'm going to have to reboot it, too. Yeah. Yeah, Shastity says, I had a friend back in my 20s who made custom guitars by hand. Yes, those are extremely expensive. Man, can you imagine buying a guitar that's fucking like fifty thousand dollars? Oh, I'm, oh well, I mean, people have paid that for like the really old ones, for like especially like Gibson and Fender guitars from the sixties. Th those are easily over ten grand because they're I so. It, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, because they're so highly collectible. I believe it. From that time. But the funny thing is, though, I I guess I'm just glad because those older guitars. They're not very comfortable for me. I prefer like the 80s style of guitars where it's very thin necks. Uh, I just got and, you know, no gloss on the back of the neck. I just got so used to them that for me, it's hard for me to. Um, to go back to like the more traditional type of, I guess, Les Pauls, because once I started playing Charvel and Jackson, that type of guitar like I wouldn't want, let's just say, I wouldn't want a Les Paul 
or a regular Strat to be my only guitar, if that makes any sense. I prefer the styling, the, the details, the way the neck feels. Because for me, the feel is like everything. You, know, you need to have two important things. Uh, like the, the most important thing when it comes to getting a guitar is how it feels. If it doesn't feel good, there's no fucking point. If, but the second is it has to sound good. If it doesn't sound good, maybe you could try changing the pickups to make it sound better. And then if it if you don't like it, okay, then it's a, it's a bust. But and third is it has to look good because if you don't like looking at it, if it if looking at it doesn't make you want to pick it up and play it, then that's eh. But then again, you can take it to a to a place you can get it repainted if you want to spend the money on it, or if you're crafty unlike me and you really want to like repaint a guitar you can do that too but for me that holy trinity is it needs to look feel good sound good and look good in that order <clears throat> yeah uh, let's see here. Yuka says, I think the most expensive guitar ever sold was si was at an auction, $6 million, because it was one of Kurt Cobain's old guitars. Yeah, I believe it. I absolutely believe that. Believe it. Jonathan says, I'm happy either way, but I prefer stock ear guitars over slimmer ones. I see. Well, for me, I just want a slim neck. Like, because... For me, like playing like that 335, that big hollow body, it's, you know, because I'm not a big guy, so it's, it just feels too big on me. That's why even when on acoustic guitars, I can only really comfortably, comfortably play like the Grand Auditorium body shape or, or, you know what, let me show, let me show you guys again. So pretty much like the most common type of acoustic guitar would be like a Dreadnought. So it would be something like this, like this type of shape. This is called a dreadnought. Something like that. But what I get more comfortable with would be like a grand auditorium. That shape for an acoustic. It's a bit smaller, much easier for me to get around. Something like that. But for me, the ultimate acoustic guitar would be the hybrid that Fender makes. They make this one called the Fender Acoustasonic. Where it looks like, like these are just badass. I mean, they've got a Telecaster, a Stratocaster, and Jazzmaster shape. Where it feels like an electric guitar, but you plug it in and you can get both acoustic and electric sounds. Like there's the Telecaster one. And yeah, the like these are very cool. All right. Uh, yeah, Jonathan says I find it hard to go back to electric after playing acoustic so often. Interesting. I've never really spent an extended amount of time playing an acoustic, so I'm probably the exact opposite, where I'm just really used to the electrics. Sanchez, welcome. Jo uh, let's see. Joseph says, hey, bro, what's the best N64 game ever, in your opinion? Well, Mo, what do you think is the best N64 game? Hmm. I would say Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty much a no-brainer. But I that's also... A pretty class that's, like, that's a pretty classy, you know? Yeah. But, but I also like Mario Party. And yeah, oh, I love not, Mario Party. I like one of the have you ever had that game where you go on the, like, it's like the Star Wars races, but it's like futuristic? That game was pretty good, Oh, the too. Star Wars pod racing game. Yeah, that was great. <clears throat> yeah, and then there was one called F1 something, like uh, F1 racing, but it was like with future, like, spacecrafts and stuff. That right. game was pretty cool, too. 
See, the funny thing is I've never played Goldeneye on the N64. Like, everyone wants to murder me now because I said that, but it's, I've never played it, so, like, I have no emotional attachment to it because the first James Bond game I ever played was um, 007 Nightfire. That was on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. I remember that, but I love Perfect Dark 2. I played that, which is essentially, like, you know, from Rare, the same guys who made Goldeneye. Lewis Baker says, I've always thought the sound of the guitar is in the player's fingers. Yeah, that can I mean, that definitely, you know, that reminds me of when uh, when Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, he was visiting Eddie Van Halen or he was there like during their sound check for like during that 2007 tour when they first reunited with David Lee Roth and he and he asked him, do you and he's and, you know, He's playing his guitar. He's, uh, Billy's playing Eddie's guitar. <laughs> and guess what? He sounded like Billy Corgan when he played it. So, but I do feel like pickups are a, are a big factor, though. Because if you just use, like, the single coil pickups versus P90s versus humbuckers, that's a very different sound. Because me, personally, I prefer humbuckers all day over single coils. Like, they have their place, but I just feel like I'm out of my comfort zone if I don't have a bridge humbucker. AP says, you freaking rock and your streams are a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much, and I appreciate that. Orotu's learning to play piano. Wait, Mo, didn't you say before that you used to play piano? Yeah, I used to. I used to play like a good amount of it too. Mm. But you know, I moved out and a lot of personal issues arise, so I got rid of the piano. I had to. So I see. I never played after that, but I I know a couple of songs. Like I know I can play "My Heart Will Go On" by Celine Dion. I can play um like some other songs, like a Christmas songs and some other, but not a lot though. To be honest with you. I have to get back into it though. Like I actually do enjoy playing piano. And I'm gonna yeah. have to do that because like it's really fun. I mean, hey, maybe one day you, me, and Keanu can all do a song together. I play guitar, Keanu sings, Mo plays keyboards. That would be cool. And that would be awesome, man. Or even just to add an addition to the band, just to have a, a piano player to it, you know? Yeah, well, our band oh, doesn't... Definitely. Well, I mean, Cobra Strike is not really a band that uses a piano. It, like, no, it's, I'm just saying it's different, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Cobra Strike is just metal. That's how I would describe yeah, Cobra yeah, Strike. It's a different thing going on. Yeah. Because you hey, know, because cool. you know you're playing. Because you know that you're playing metal. When after each rehearsal, my legs are sore, my arms are sore, my wrist hurts just from the constant down picking all the time on the bass. And believe it or not, y'all, I even knew how to play saxophone too. When was that? When I was in high school, bro. Oh wait, you were in band before. Yeah, I took band. You don't remember? I don't remember. Yep. Yeah, well, well, actually, actually, now that you, but I don't think you went to my school when I did. But the when I was at the school, like during that time, I was actually in band and I actually played saxophone. Ah, oh, shit. All right. So I know how to play two instruments: saxophone and piano. I see. But when was the last time you played the saxophone? <laughs> years i think i rem i remember how to play it but like music music i don't remember any of the music anymore mm, yeah i actually do remember how to play saxophone though yeah because it a lot of it is really muscle memory because you just have to keep yeah, doing it like, over and once, over again once, yeah it's like well it's like piano too once you know the keys you're in it's it's like really in any instrument you know yeah what I mean? so but because that reminds me once you get yeah it down, it's like, yeah, because Slash said before 
And Slash said before that he plays all the time. He plays every day um, as much as he can because he's scared that he's going to forget how to play if he, if he doesn't play guitar at least more than 30 minutes every single day. I feel well. That's I feel like that. That's like every instrument. Because sometimes, when I was practicing doing piano, I was doing like an hour at max. So like I couldn't do it after that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like even thirty minutes was pushing it. To be honest with you, you know, because like you got to move your fingers too. Yeah. On piano and sax too. You're just doing it in a different way, but it's still all finger work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that's just, that's just that's just how it is. Yeah, Jonathan says singing is probably harder to learn if you're no good at it. Well, nobody is ever good right away. Nah, it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't always agree. Like you just gotta practice. You know, you gotta get you at the right tone with the right voice. Exactly. Gonna, you know, just keep but, fooling, mm. like you're gonna be all right. It's like practicing the instrument. It's the same thing, you know. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah, uh, welcome, Rage. He says, "Nice shirt." Yeah, Guns and Roses. My, the band that inspired me to be a, to learn to play me. The band that inspired me to be a musician. That's the best way I can describe them. Yeah, Jonathan says my plan is to spend an hour a day learning guitar, another half hour on keyboard, and another hour on something else. So Yuka says, "Can you play the drums?" Well. When I was still in my mom's house, I had a drum kit, and I was trying to learn. You remember that, right, Mo? Yeah, I remember. I mean, I think man, drums though is hard for me, man. I cannot do it, man. It's hard. Well, I I, re I played a little bit of a song one time years ago when I was living in uh in another you know area. Right. With some friends of mine, and I had a neighbor and. We would play, and he would teach me, but, man, it was fucking difficult, dude. Like, it was difficult for me. Like, I, I barely could handle it. Like, it was just too much. Right. Well, Jonathan says, I mean, as far as I know, Guns N' Roses only had that one great album. Well, well, no, they had... Technically, three great albums because there's you. There's of course Appetite for Destruction, the debut masterpiece. Then there's Use Your Illusion One, Use Your Illusion Two, and then there was also the EP uh, G and R Lies, which or covers. But that's the good stuff from G and R. Yeah, drummers like yeah. Danny Carey is my favorite drummer. That's still that's alive. Because he is um, incredible. Like, all those different polyrhythms he does, I don't know how he does it. Like, it's even more impressive because I'm not a drummer, but I've attempted to learn once. I'll show you guys a clip of that, actually. How to take a shit. Well, yeah, I mean, I would say Neil Pert number, for me, Jonathan, Neil Pert is number one, and Jason, sorry, Neil Pert number one, John Bonham number two. Maybe Danny Carey's number three, I I, I don't know. I just haven't spent a long time man, thinking really of drummers. Man, you really want to make me back to piano, man, for real. Like, if I can learn how to play piano, man, that'd be great, too, you know? And Zach's back again. I swear I made a video of... I swear there was a video of me here. Or did I not upload it? I don't know. Um, Tomorrow's Friday, man. Yeah. I guess I'm going to come pick you up on Saturday. I'm going to pick you up on Saturday. I hope tomorrow the car is ready. Okay. Um, to be honest, I love this car, man, but I'm ready to turn it in. It's too much gas. What, the, the minivan? Yeah, it's a lot. Dude, I picked, I filled it up one day, and in two days, it's already below half a tank. Oh, wow. And all I go, all I go to work and come back. <laughs> 
Apparently, I found out this is a six-cylinder engine, so that's why it's taking a lot of gas. Wow. I'm like trying. right now, like tomorrow, I may have to wake up early and gas. One more day. I'm trying because there was one video of me. I agree. Yuka says Neil Peart is the greatest drummer of all time. Absolutely. Oh, I'm going to because I'm trying to look for it so I can show it to you guys because I know it has to be in here. I, because if it's not, I think, you know what, I think what it actually might be is it might have been, I don't think it was something I ever uploaded. Um, let me see here. I, it, it's probably in my files. No, not this one. It was the other one. I gotta buy me a new hard drive for my computer. I don't have no space. Mm. Oh wait, it's not here? Shit. Man, I... Oh god, it's driving me crazy. I know it's somewhere in here. Okay, then I guess it's not here. God damn it. I know. I don't get it. Why? Because I, kn I knew I had that drum kit. Like, did I set them to private for whatever reason? Can you search? Try searching. I, well, I, I just typed in drums in the search, and it was only that video of Keanu that was popping up. Oh, and he was playing at Guitar Center. Oh, they, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how private would affect it, but I don't know, maybe. Uh, I don't know, yeah, because I... Now. Right. Come on, it's... Okay, it has to fucking be in here. Yeah, I got a long drive, yo. I'm driving now. I'm not. I'm still 20 minutes away from home. Ah. Uh, oh yes. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Wait. There was just there was an acute. Yes. Here we go. Drumming to a backing track for the first time. Thank goodness I found it. I knew this. Oh, searching for it would be worth it. <clears throat> So yeah, so I'm going to ask you guys now, would you guys want to watch the video of me playing the drums? Because I was not very good at it, but this is me trying. Hi, everybody. It is All right. Um, let me put this on full screen. So yeah, this was... Back in my mom's house. Fucking hit me. <clears throat> Something hit the window here. Oh my god. What? Was it a giant truck? No, it was a piece of rock. I hope it's not fucking cracked. They're, they're gonna... Dude, now they check the fucking windows now. When you go return it. Like, they fucking check every crevice. Yeah. Jonathan says, I'm sure you still kept time better than Lars. <laughs> uh, Scott Anderson, we do not talk about religion on this channel. <clears throat> All right, that's your first and only warning. Display capture, Logitech web. Uh. 
Oh, I put I had them in the wrong order. There we go. And then I will minimize me. So yeah, this was me playing the drums. This is my first time recording myself doing it. I believe I got, because we were talking about uh, Sam Ash closing down 18 stores. I got this used for like $200 at Sam Ash. So let me know if you guys could hear it. It's kind of quiet. I, yeah, there's nothing I could do about it, but come on, come on. I actually haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> I remember this. Now I remember that backing track. Yeah, because I didn't know anything about mixing or balancing audio. This was in 2020, Yuka. <clears throat> Because this was just using the uh, the Blue Yeti. Like I don't know anything about micing a drum set. Jonathan says it doesn't sound as bad as I thought it would. Well, this was bef was well, this was uh, like three weeks of practicing. says, to be honest, I don't mind a bit of fluctuation in my BPM. <laughs> yeah, that was my first time playing to a jam track. Alright, when is- oh god, okay, I'm just gonna end it here, cause the- the embarrassment is killing me inside. So anyway, yeah, that was me playing the drums. I'll post the link if you guys actually want to watch that in the chat room. Here you go. There's a Hyundai Sonata in front of me. Oh. I don't know what year it is, but it looks cool. Mm. It's yeah, a Buick. I, I mean, hey, a five, hey, Yuka, a 5 out of 10 is not bad for at that time I was playing like only for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> But if you, someone handed me a pair of drumsticks right now, I would have no fucking idea what to do.
All right. Well, we are at 225 total views. We've got 19 current viewers. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Aro2 says, I saw a Ford Model A a few weeks ago and brand new. Uh, I've, I've never heard of a Model A before. Hang on. Oh, interesting. I've seen like Tesla, Tesla Model A, B. Well, yeah. it's, it's the, oh, no. well, the Teslas are the Model S, I think, and like the hatchback is called the Model Y. Oh, wow. Made from 1927 to 1931. Yeah, oh, I've, wow. I've seen some of these old Ford cars before, like on the street where people like would hot rod them. And man, those cars are, are cool, man, really. Yeah, I'm sure Jay Leno has like thousands of them. <laughs> Because you know Jay Leno collects cars, right, Mo? Oh, yeah. He loves them. I used to, I, my, my grandfather used to love old cars. Because Jay Man, Leno, yeah, because it was, because because uh, I remember in my childhood, it was Jay Leno and then Conan. Then it became Conan and Jimmy Fallon. Then it became uh, Leno back. And now it, but by the way, because uh, it sucked that Conan only hosted the tonight show for seven months like it was like nbc did him dirty but i'm just so glad that i don't know if you knew this um he's uh, got the nerve conan go in front of the cop in speed well uh jonathan jay leno right now he is on youtube he has a show called jay leno's garage where it's just him showing cars pretty much Yeah, doesn't he have a show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Leno's Garage. It's on YouTube. Yeah, He's been doing it for cool, a few man. years. I actually seen it, dude. It looks cool. Yeah, Conan for me is number one. Like, he's my number one favorite. Uh, like, because now he doesn't do a talk show, but he has his podcast right now, which is called Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, which is fucking hilarious. But. The but you know what I also like Seth Meyers like I love his day drinking segment that's pretty funny oh it's pretty cool but you know Seth Meyers is a lot like Conan where he rose through the ranks where he was just a writer at SNL just like Conan and now he's ho ha you know hosting his own show <clears throat> but I would also say Craig Ferguson was another amazing one. I loved to watch Craig Ferguson. Like, like I wish I had Craig Ferguson's charisma. Like the way he, because usually with most American talk shows, they would have his, uh, they would have a script, uh, like with these pre-interview questions, and Craig famously would tear them up, and everything would just be off the cuff. And he is so naturally funny and entertaining. Like especially. Like, the way Craig Ferguson flirted with his female guests on the show was amazing. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, because the way Craig does it is the best way to do it, where you are, the two of you are just joking and having fun, and no one's taking each other seriously. You're just having a good laugh at it. That's the way to do it. Like, guys, seriously, don't listen to all these fucking... And, oh, I almost said a, a name out loud that I almost regretted, but saying out loud, but <laughs> instead you need to, uh, because there's this, whatever, watch Craig Ferguson. If you want to know how to be an entertaining person talking to any human being, watch Craig Ferguson's show. Like he is one of the greatest interviewers ever, like especially like when, when he would talk to Don Rickles. Or when he would talk to, um, who else? Robin Williams. Those were amazing. Like, he also had an amazing interview with, uh, like, because there's this guy on YouTube. His YouTube channel is called The Jay Leno Fly. And because uh, Craig used to do, an or the, the robot, Jeff, he would do an impression 
of like of Jay Leno if he was a fly. And that's where that guy got the name for that tribute YouTube channel. If you watch that, <clears throat> if you watch the Jay Leno fly and it's like five, like he groups up these compilations where every visit that each guest had. So I was watching one earlier for with, uh, with like Gillian Jacobs, and I saw another one with Allison Bree, who they were both on community. And then I saw hey, uh, one I with up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be home and I gotta, I gotta okay. be dinner, so I'm gonna hit All right. Hey, y'all still on? I'll go join. If not, then uh for sure next time. Yeah. All right. Oh okay. Well oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's Mo, everyone. Uh well I'll all right, I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye. Yeah, Jonathan, I don't understand a lot of the hate boner that people have for James Corden. Like, I'm not a fan of him, but I don't outright hate him. That is something I didn't, I never understood because, because he says the fact James Corden got his own show in America is insane. Like, what is it about James Corden that so many people just like instantly like turn into the hulk whenever his name is brought up i uh, like i i just don't know okay i'm see okay yeah yeah now yuka says james corden is one of the worst celebrities what is it about him that makes it that makes you say that because so many people say james corden sucks james corden sucks james corden sucks i never see anyone say this is why he sucks, and this is why I don't like him. He comes across as really trying too hard to be liked. Okay. The fake laughing and trying to make everything about him. I mean, but isn't that every talk show host? Because when you see Conan or Craig Ferguson laugh, or David Letterman, or Jay Leno, it was genuine. But you know what I love? CBS did not give a fuck about Craig Ferguson. Because during that time period, um, David Letterman owned the 11... It's something that will never happen ever again in TV history. David Letterman owned the that um that 12 I well for me in Texas he came on Craig Ferguson the late late show would start up at 12:30 a.m. so for so for 12 so for 12:30 uh for 12:30 a.m. he would, would come on but David Letterman's production company owned that time slot but now instead it's uh, the show from Taylor Tomlinson, and I I am a Taylor Tomlinson fan. Like I've I've uh, some of the stand up from her I've seen has made me laugh a lot. But um, but Conan actually brought her when Conan was going on a tour. He made he let her open up for him, and if Conan lets you open up for him, that says something. <clears throat> like there's actually a video of him buying her. Uh, one of the American Girl dolls, and then he made him pick between one or the other. That one, that clip is pretty funny. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, it is six twenty-six uh, right now. But um, I have to go, and actually, now that Mo is here, I could actually change the title to... Uh, actually, I could do that right now. Um, just chatting with guest Mo. M3. Okay. Well, guys, um, I have to get going now. But um, it was great talking to you guys again, because 
even when there's times when I didn't feel like streaming, I made myself do it. And then as, so uh, as soon as I got started with it, I thought, oh, yeah, what was I? What was the big deal? Why did I not feel like it for so long? So anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.